All right. Welcome, everyone. Second episode of Stars Speak. Um, today, you know, we have Olga Niabizi uh, talk with Meg Bramlett. So I'll let you guys introduce yourselves, have some conversation, you know, and then uh, go ahead and take them here. Oh, wow. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction. <laughs> um, I'm already having a good time. Um, well, like Stan, I don't know if you introduced yourself. This is Stan, by the way. Um, like Stan said, uh, my name is Olga Niabizi, um, current North Shore player. Um, I don't really have a position these days. I just kind of play. Um, so today uh, we have Meg, who's one of our for, um, North Shore alumni, so former player. That's what that means. Um, and um, we're going to be talking about um, jobs and networking things and what you can kind of do to improve those um, those skills in your portfolio. Um, and it's going to be a good discussion. I'll let Meg kind of introduce herself in a North Shore capacity um, and then... Um, we, we, I've got a few icebreaker questions so that the audience and the crowd can really get, get to know you, Meg. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. Um, so, uh, I'm Meg Bramlett. Um, I played, uh, on North Shore in 2002 and 2003, which it's hard to believe it was that long ago. It seems in many ways like it was just yesterday. Um, I uh, I was a lock and uh, eight during my time there, and um, after yeah, <laughs> uh, after uh, like two thousand three. Um, uh, well, I also I met my wife playing in North Shore, which is awesome. Big shot. Um, and uh, well, we didn't get married right away, but yeah. What's but, her um, name, by the way? Wow. Her name is also Meg. <laughs> also Meg. She likes it when you call her that. Also Meg. She's on the call as well, just to keep things um, confusing for everybody. But um, uh, anyway, I met Heather Meg, and we moved to New York um, in 2003 um, for work. And uh, due to a combination of things, um, mostly the clubs out there weren't North Shore and we didn't love it. It wasn't nearly as much fun. Um, also, we were pretty broke. Uh, that w and also, uh, I had several injuries, uh, several concussions, not to put too fine a point on it. Uh, that was the end of our, of, of my, and also other men's playing days was, uh, back in 2003. Um, prior to North Shore, I played, uh, in college at, um, Columbia University, also in New York. Uh, I also played basketball, uh, varsity basketball at, at Columbia. And, um, I studied engineering there as well. Hey, oh, and... that's <laughs> I did too, yes. That's right. Um. Let's see. Anything else in my? Oh, I'm from the South Side. I went to mm -hmm. Homewood Flossmore. Mm -hmm. Um. So sort of bounced back and forth between Chicago and New York uh, at the beginning of my career, and then um, went to London for a little bit. Um. Back to New York, and then ultimately about eight years ago, we moved out to Seattle, where we live now. And <laughs> we got uh, this Seattle. I work at I work at Amazon. So. That's my short bio. Excellent. Um, so, you know, I'm as we are in Illinois, I'm sure you in Seattle are currently under a shelter in place order. Yes. Um, so has is there anything that you've done during this shelter? In, this is an icebreaker in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> um, is there anything you've done during the shelter in place? Any projects you've picked up and or finished? I, I've um, been any cooking. Like, Ooh. my life depends on it. Um, I've been, I've always enjoyed cooking. It has gone to a new level. Uh, I am now the person who posts pictures of their food <laughs> yes. uh, on the internet. Um, Do you want to plug your Instagram so people can see your yeah, your socials? You know, too old for that. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> but other other Meg might post some stuff on there. So, um, uh, what geez. sort of dishes are you making? Is it anything? Yeah, what's your go to? So I don't really have like one thing. Um, 
But, like, I'll tell you what I'm going to cook tomorrow night. So I'm going to do a rotisserie chicken with, uh, like, I'm going to put, I'm actually, I actually have a rotisserie. So I'm going to oh. do the oh, rotisserie. Oh, wow. Um, oh, my God. Um, uh, and it's going to have, like, a bunch of, like, herbs in it. And then I'm going to do a uh, lemony mashed potato with grilled Ooh. asparagus and foraged ramps. If you don't know what ramps are, it's like a wild, it's like a hybrid garlic and scallion kind of thing. And you, they only come in season like right now. And it's like a very short season. And for whatever reason, you can't really buy them in the grocery store. You can only get them wild. So anyway, that's what's for dinner tomorrow night. Wow. wow well, we are coming over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that sounds great. Like Meg, other so Meg. Two yeah. extra plates. Two extra plates, Max. Yep. I mean, also, I make breakfast and lunch wow. for my wife every day. Wow. She seems to be throwing fun. It's been, it's been pretty awesome, I have to say. I've been working from home for a long time, and like having her at home to cook me dinner has been and the best part. And breakfast and lunch. <laughs> yes, all the meals. <laughs> um, so, any projects I, of your own? I, I want to keep it under wraps, but um, in my current brain, there is the seedlings of um being planted of a, ca- a catio um stay tuned friends mm-hmm. for what that progress will look like um lots of details being worked out um so meg moving on um yeah. another fun question i kind of like to ask to you know see see where you've been um what you've been up to but do you have any, perhaps, any crazy, like, right, there's this idea of, like, one degree of separation, or maybe, you know, you, you're you somewhere and bump into somebody that's, like, perhaps famous. Do you well, have a yeah. crazy celebrity run in the totally. story? Totally. So, you guys know who Shade is? Yes. She yes. is our neighbor. No way! Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding? Yeah. Yes. 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 Come on, join it. Isn't it great? I love Shade it. used to be our neighbor. Where? We lived and- in, in London. And she's very glamorous. And she used yeah. to garden a lot. And, and um, she would wear like these jumpsuits, these like cat suit <laughs> numbers with like big hat. And she would say hi and good morning. And there was, and yeah, she was our neighbor. What? Wow, that is, listen, I ask this icebreaker question a lot. That one literally has my jaw on the ground. Anyway, love her. Big fan, big fan. So it wasn't just like an encounter, but more of like a sustained maybe. Yeah, like we were not friends. Like to be sure we never had like a conversation, (laughs) but we were good morning acquaintances. You know what I mean? It's like the neighbor. Good yeah, I like walk. You were part yeah. of the same homeowners association. Correct. Right. We were in the, in the hood. I walk by your house every day on the way to the subway. So wow, yeah. that's wow. crazy. Yeah. Um, oh, wow, that really. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you have any? Well, crazy? one time we went to a uh, Kanye West Sunday service. We did mm. do that. We're, like, probably forty feet away from that. We mm. did do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The tickets for free. We yeah. went before a game. You know. Yeah. And so fire you up. Time. Fire yeah. Up. yeah. We really it were was, inspired. Was, yeah. You know? I, I was mm. feats within Kanye. It was pretty surreal. Um, and we turned nice. around and played rugby, so that was pretty, pretty <laughs> <It's> cool. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. two <laughs> yeah. Um, Wow, mm. that's a crazy one. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, thanks for that. Mm-hmm. Um, so sort of kind of the last question I have here in our icebreaker segment Um as it relates to North Shore, you know, during your time, obviously you've already told us that you met your wife here, which is this pretty big, powerful. Moment, is it, that's a big milestone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, are, are there, do you have any other favorite North Shore memory? I mean, I think like for me, like, first of all, like North Shore, I have friends like all over the world. Because of rugby, North Shore and also Columbia, like uh, it's sort of like my whole community is like a function of those things like my friends and then the friends of those friends and the friends of those friends those are my people like Mm -hmm. I got my job at Amazon because 
uh, from a referral from my old, from an old coach, not not North Shore coach, but a, a Columbia coach, you know. Um, mm. But I guess it's just the community is really the thing that I'll always sort of carry with me. And then, of course, like, I met my wife, you know. I don't know if I can really say there was anything better than that. So I would actually should probably take it under advisement. There was nothing better than that. It's <laughs> <laughs> a trick question. Yeah, <laughs> I know. lunch and dinner. I really say the same about you. <laughs> Um, but actually, I can tell. I mean, the story of how we met is actually kind of funny. So, yes, yes, yes. 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 Um, so North Shore. I don't know if you guys still do this, but um, so I moved. I moved back from New York to Chicago, um, and um, I, I'd been playing rugby in, in college, and I wanted to keep playing rugby. And so, um, like North Shore practiced on like Mondays and Wednesdays. And Chicago women practiced on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And so my master plan was I was going to go to a week's worth of practices for both clubs and pick my side. Okay. So I email both teams to get the information, whatever. And um, I get an email back from North Shore. And it's like, here's the times. And do you have a ride? And where you live? And blah, blah, blah. And um, what I didn't realize at the time uh, was that you, you guys had like a program where it was like when rookies or potential rookies would um, join the club or be express interest in the club, you would match them with an alum or with a veteran. Oh, but yeah. and it was basically just like to make sure that they like made it to practice, you know, and like just didn't just like bail or whatever. And anyway, I, and like someone to have a beer with afterwards and like you know help sort of like indoctrinate them into the North Shore crew. Anyway, um, Meg, other Meg, was my veteran buddy. Oh, oh no way. Oh, okay. oh. And uh, I was her rookie oh, buddy. Nice story. And, uh, uh, anyway, she uh, she took her job very seriously. <laughs> I would imagine. <laughs> it's still <laughs> going. <laughs> she really wanted to make sure that I was like you know had a ride to practice so she would like you know be there in the morning <laughs> she's like i better sleep over so you can <laughs> yeah <laughs> wow you've been uh, wow having such a good good time so far full of stories you know and that's that's what you know this has been really all about like yes we do want to share some information out for the general public but you know sharing these stories I think is also important because yeah. the community is you know is the community and it's it's yeah, always it's not just who's here. playing right it's yeah. not just who's playing or who's healthy or whatever it's it's everybody and yeah I think especially like with what's going on right now with all this craziness like my sense of community is bigger than it's ever been you know mm -hmm. and I find myself like reaching out to people and happy to do things like this you know because mm -hmm. it's important I mean what else do we have at the end of the day so yeah yeah um well so kind of what I you know I mean topic of discussion sure. um is um for those of you who are just joining, uh, welcome. Um, topic of today's um, discussion, um, we're really just trying to um, talk about discuss like jobs, um, career-wise, um, you know, what that looks like um, for, for women um, in the industry, and then also networking and, and what that's about, um, how that looks like, how to do it successfully. Um, and so to kick us off, Meg, why don't you just kind of tell us um you know you gave us a little bit of your rugby history so why don't you give us a little bit of like your career background yeah. and where where that journey has gone yeah so i i i came out of school as an engineer uh at columbia and but i also so like 9 11 was my senior year um oh. the tech the tech bubble burst like during the course of my senior year and so it was a very strange and scary time to be looking for a job. I actually have a lot of empathy uh, for, for young people who are, especially those coming out of school right now, who are like trying to find jobs. It was a very strange time, um, especially in the tech world, which is where I, I intended to work. Um, there really weren't jobs. People were getting paid not to show up at their jobs. Um, but the banks were doing great. I got hired by Citibank um, coming out of school and I was a, uh, um, uh, 
it was originally it was like a management trainee program kind of like rotational oh, okay. dad, you know yeah. and um it was going to be in new york and um uh i'm sure they were doing their sort of like risk assessments and like saying like hmm, maybe we should like diversify the location of our training programs since the sky might be falling in New York City and yeah, literally yeah right. <laughs> at that time it was a very 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 scary time and yeah again not un- unlike what's happening now what's happening now is on a totally different scale but you know I mean I went to my senior year at Columbia there were literally tanks parked on the campus oh wow like Wow. The National Guard was like stationed outside of our dorms, you know. Oh, so it was nice. pretty serious. And um, so anyway, they were like, "We're going to diversify the locations of these programs, and we're going to start one in Chicago." We know you're from Chicago. Would you like to um, do that? And I was like, "Yes, I'm out." And so, <laughs> um, so the program was for city banks, what they call the retail banking program, which is like. Um, consumer banking, so it's banking services that that custom people like you and me use every day. But okay, in right. Chicago, the group that was there was their credit card business, and so I ended up in credit cards yeah. and in payments, and I'm still in payments today. So it's this really sort of strange accident that led to me getting um, into the industry that I've ended up spending 20 years in. Um, uh, so I, I started in, in the Citibank and had a bunch of different jobs there, uh, ended up, like I said, moving back to New York, more stuff at Citibank, all still in payments. Um, then the, it was call it like the early moments of the financial crisis, where if you were paying attention, you could tell that something was not quite right. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was like, and, you know, people are like getting issued credit and you're like, why are they? getting credit cards like this doesn't make sense and Mm -hmm. you know anyway I was like this doesn't feel right and so I I left the bank and I went to a consulting company a small company called Ariyama like uh if you're familiar with like Gino Ariyama spelled the same way no relation okay uh, spelled like that right we went to Notre Dame Um, so so you know the draw yeah so we uh so I went with this consulting company uh, and I was leading a group that was doing basically market insights, so like research and mm-hmm. customer um, insights and basically like uh, banks or retailers or technology companies or anyone who really needed to like get paid for stuff, right, which is everybody, would ask us like, how do I build a better payments business? And my team would answer those kinds of questions for them. Um, after a few years of doing that, my boss walked into my office and uh, he, um, he said, uh, I've always wanted to have an office, uh, an international practice. Would you like to go found it? <laughs> and I was like 27 years old. And we had just gotten married like five seconds earlier. I guess it was 26. Yeah, I was 26. And so I was just like young and dumb enough to be like, I'm totally qualified to do this. And, <laughs> yes, yes, um, man, yes. Just, just, just <laughs> foolish and enthusiastic enough to be like, of course I can do this. I know exactly what it takes to start a business in a new country, in a country that I've like only ever been to briefly on vacation. Um, <laughs> and cool. so I went home and I was like, Meg, we're going to move to England. What do you think? <laughs> <And she was> like, <laughs> like, God love her. This is my favorite attribute of my life. She was like, absolutely. We'll do it. And, um, yeah, she's nice. And, She's the uh, one, you know? Yeah, totally. She, uh, she definitely is. Uh, she, she, she says yes to everything I suggest. So it's, <laughs> It's really been fun um, for me, at least. <laughs> um, no, but anyway, so we moved to England and I just started. I just started a business and I, I did everything from like get the licenses that you need to operate a business and bank accounts and office space. And I had to hire people. I had to decide what our business was going to be. I had to hire people. I had to sell, like pitch, come up with like pitches and things like that to sell stuff to people and get them to pay us and I was you know custodian and collection agent and uh CEO and everything Mm -hmm. and um 
and uh, I also had to start therapy right about that time. <laughs> 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 uh, but uh, after about three years, uh, the business was profitable and um, it was a good moment to sort of transition back. And so I moved back. Uh, we moved back to New York. And I spent another couple of years at the company doing M&A work. So like mer- mergers and acquisitions, putting putting banks together, taking them apart, putting doing deals, credit card, you know, issuing deals, doing stuff like that. Partnerships of all different um, varieties. And then um, I had, so it's like a family owned consulting company. And it kind of like moved up through the ranks. And I basically had gotten about as far as I was going to get without having a different last name. <laughs> you know, it was like, uh, no lot. Like I, I, I really like was enjoying myself and, mm-hmm. but it was just, I was ready for the next big challenge. And, um, I then started talking to people that I respected, including my old rugby coach who I kept in touch with. And, uh, and, you know, he was like, there's this new business get that just got funding uh, at Amazon and I can't tell you anything about it, but I think you'd be great for it. And that was like right at New Year's. And six weeks later, we were living in Seattle. Since then, I've been at Amazon for about eight years. I've had three different positions at Amazon. I led uh, product management for a business called Amazon Register, which was like Square. It was like a credit card reader and an application oh, where you could take so payments nice. and stuff. Um, we like built the business, launched the business, ran the business, decided it was a terrible business for us to be in, exited the business. And although at Amazon, like killing a business is like a badge of honor. And so then they were like, oh, oh, oh cheers. Uh, cheers to you. you. What would you like to do next? And uh, my boss was like um why don't you come over with us and we're gonna start this new team and we're gonna sell stuff on alexa so i was the head of product and marketing for alexa voice shopping for like a few years and so like my team built all the all the features and capabilities that were like you ask her for something that you want to buy like order dog food my team would help for would we ran that part of the business and um, and then after a few years of like what I call my payments hiatus, uh, going over and working in crazy technology with like voice AI, who knows what that is. Um, uh, I missed payments. And so I started again talking to some of my crew and the, uh, one of my buddies was like, uh, why don't you come back? And we've got this cool job. And I was like, awesome. And so now my job is, um, I am the director for payment acceptance in Europe. So in short, I run Amazon's cash register. Cool. Nice. We have an Alexa. So. <laughs> Alexa, no. Alexa, no. But no, that's, We have to call it the voice computer because uh, in our house, because of it, otherwise it just lights up all the time. So we, have, we have a few around here. So anyway, sorry, that was a little long, but... You get older, your bio takes longer to tell. I think that um, (laughs) there is a lot to go over in in there. And I think that you did a really good job of like kind of illustrating how your story is taking you from um, like one point to another. You know, you were in New York, then you were in London, and then now, you know, you're in Seattle. So um, that's really exciting to hear. And it really ties in nicely um, to our other um point that we wanted to focus on because it seemed at least from uh when you were working at the consultant you know you moved into um spaces in amazon and that was like through it seems like your own personal network that you had like kept in in touch with and built on and when you were transferring and moving around in amazon it seemed like that you again tapped into that and tapped into your resources there um so could you um kind of go over like what are some of the important points there of networking and um, maybe like talk about what it is because perhaps the picture that some people have is like different than what actually is is useful and and beneficial i've never applied for a job in my life 
Never. Wow. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> Every single job I have ever had, including my first job out of college, was triggered by a personal referral. Mm. It was triggered by someone I worked for, someone I worked with, someone I had a personal relationship with or a mentorship relationship with. Um, every single job I've ever had, including internal transfers, is a function of, of my own personal network. And it is um, investing in that network um, is something, it's probably the most important thing that I do. Um, especially as you get more senior and into like more executive positions, it, my job is not anymore about what skills do I have. Like I don't have to write code anymore. Thank God. Um, you know, I don't have to like, you know, work on spreadsheets. I don't even, I don't even write like documents nearly as much as I used to. My job is, is much more about connecting people and, mentoring people and coaching people and ultimately like inspiring people to do better and more and what have you. Um, I think a lot of people think that networking is about like having like clicking on shit on LinkedIn or like going to events or conferences. And they think that like, by ticking some boxes, you know, I, oh, I, I've been networking. I, you know, spent time on LinkedIn or I, whatever, you know, went to this event or a meetup or whatever. But unless you are, unless you are really sort of planning how those things are going to help you yield your ultimate goals, you're just, you're just spending time. You're not those clicks and, you know, webinars and stuff like that, those aren't actually helping you achieve your goals unless they are purposeful. Mm -hmm. So the advice that I always give to people about like, well, how do you network effectively? Well, how do you make your network work for you is really to start by interviewing yourself. Okay. And you say self, what, what do you want to do? And you have to be ruthlessly honest with yourself. Okay. And maybe that's about, you know, Maybe it's about finding a new job or maybe it's about finding a different boss or maybe it's about taking on new skills or moving to a different place, right? About once a year, I sometimes more often depends. I, I will sit down and I'll say like, what's making me happy about my job and what am I not happy about my job? Mm -hmm. And I... I sort of take a personal inventory or self interview or whatever, whatever you want to call it. And I think about how can I make those things that I don't like go away and how can I double down on the things that I do like, right. Or, or want to, or want to do more of. And so then I look to my, then I think about my network and <laughs> I say, who in my network can help me achieve these goals? Right. Who am I? Ne if that's finding a new job, let's just say that. Right. And then I start talking to people and I'm again, like if people who know me, like I'm pretty brutally honest, maybe to the, maybe too much. And, um, I just tell the universe what I want. <laughs> say universe. I would like to have an international experience, you know, that, that move to London you know, looking back on it, you know, it's sort of when I tell the story, it sounds like it was just like, you know, the universe smiled down upon me, you know, it did, I mean, it's, of course, we got a little lucky, but like, that happened because I was, ex I was, ver you know, uh, explicit with my boss about what my goals were. Right. Right. <laughs> and I said, like, this is what I want. This is where I want to grow. This is how I want to grow. And it wasn't like, I want to move. So you should definitely do this or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Because I was working hard, because I was doing a good job, because I was explicit with my network about what my goals were, uh, people want to help. <laughs> people yeah. want to help you grow, especially yeah. if you earned the trust and respect of somebody. They will go to extreme lengths to help you grow in those ways you know so that's my advice 
um, for, for networking is, you know, sort of step one, know what you're networking for. Step mm-hmm. two, be explicit with your network about what it is you're trying to achieve. Just you ha- haphazardly swirling around the universe is not actually that useful. And then, like, step three, like, invest in your network, you know, like, talk to the people that, that are in your- Ask them what they're doing. Ask how you can help them, right? So mm-hmm. it's a, it goes around and around. I think Jen, Jenny, I saw a question yeah, pop up, but I, I it disappeared before I could. Okay, the question is from Jenny Lou. Um, what's your best advice for introverts who don't like quote unquote traditional networking? Well, Jenny, what what do you think traditional networking is? First of all, because I don't like traditional networking. I think, but I I, I want to know what you think it is. Yeah, like just putting yourself out there and having meetings with people and chatting with people. Um, so, as a, this, I mean, so yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to give like a somewhat unsatisfying answer to, but like, in, in, in my opinion, like you have to decide what is more important to you. Mm-hmm. Is it more important to you, like, to, rem- like, if, if you, if you are seeking something you want, right, I want a new job, but you're unwilling to do the work for it, then you don't want it. Mm. Mm. Oh, preach. Mm. Yes, yeah, fair, 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 fair. You know, <laughs> and like, like I said, the universe is not like, you know, it doesn't like, uh, nobody's reading your mind. Like, you have to tell people what you want, you know? And there are, you know, gay technology, there are lots of different tools and forums and opportunities for doing that in ways that hopefully are more comfortable to introverted people. You know, I married an introverted person. And she works her butt off at, you know, communicating to people. And it's, it's, I know it's can be exhausting for her sometimes, but she works hard at it because she knows it's important. I will say that like the thing I've learned from Meg is that as much as I hate going to like, let's have bagel and coffee and blah, blah, blah at the traditional networking events, I don't have to do that. But I don't mind talking to people about what's interesting to them and about what's going on in my life. And that is networking also. Can I answer your question, Jenny? Yes, cool, great answer. Thank you for that input. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I guess one of the things that I've, I wanted to talk about um, is it seemed, especially within Amazon and maybe from leaving the consulting company, um, there was a conscious choice, right? Where you're like, okay, like I want to do something different. Um, what what are some of the indicators um, mm. that that you're like you you're done growing in a role or a position? Yeah. I think you know for me, I've sort of, like I said, I've always sort of kept like a personal inventory, right? What's making me happy? What's not making me happy? And you know, it was, there were a couple of things that were you know, going on at the consulting company that made me want want to consider other offers like for the record i adored the people there i adored my boss he's like my number one one of my you know closest mentors and and you know i left on very very good terms the thing that i was missing was as a consultant you don't you're not um you're not accountable in the same way you are when you are working uh, in house, and this is true, like yeah. for all kinds of client really services, true. right? Yeah. Like really you're true. accountable for the project, you're accountable right. for the thing you're hired for, right? But like, you know, there's all the others. You're not accountable for the customer. You're not, yeah. whatever. And um, you know, I, I learned so much in that consulting company. I, it was like I never went to grad school, but it was totally like my, you know, MBA and my PhD in how to run a business, right? Said all these different kinds of experiences, but I was never the owner of them. (laughs) You know, I was, I was an advisor and I wanted to be the owner. I wanted to be the, uh, I wanted that pressure. I wanted that, um, that responsibility. And um, I got, I got that end a lot more at Amazon (laughs) Um, because you know, the cool thing, one of the cool, many cool things about Amazon is like, we solve really big problems. You know, there's millions and millions and millions of people, um, billions and billions and billions of dollars. Um, 
you know, and, and so the stakes are super high. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that, that was kind of the thing. And, and I guess like to answer your question more specifically, like what do you look for? You know, I can always come back to this like personal inventory thing, like asking yourself, like, what do I want? And if you can't get that in mm-hmm. your current job, Right. It could be, by the way, it could be, I, I'm really not getting along with my boss. Well, right. can, you know, but I like the work I do. Well, can you make that change at your company? Is that feasible to do? You know, could you do it internally? Do you want to do it internally? Mm-hmm. Right. So again, it's just, it's asking yourself the hard questions um, and being honest with yourself. Um, but I often find a lot of people like sort of wait for the tea leaves to align them. So they're like waiting for some signal from the universe that it's time to go or it's time to, it doesn't exist, you know? Um, so yeah. You have another question from the audience. Um, so Gabrielle Cole writes, um, <laughs> uh, if you can, <laughs> she's also standing right here. <laughs> um, but, uh, if you can kind of talk. Um, dive in more into about um, starting and building a business. Um, yeah. Obviously, like, you know, you don't have to go into the whole, like, start a business one-on-one, but some um, highs and lows and things that you took away from that. It was way harder than I thought it was going to be. I, I also, you know, I had a, a very serious safety net, right? Like, mm-hmm. I had a biz. I What I was really doing was starting like a sister business you know Mm -hmm. so the the parent business was still there and I wasn't gonna like it wasn't all it wasn't my money you know Mm -hmm. (laughs) it was somebody else like so I you know it's different than like if I was gonna like put out my own shingle and come up like at the same time I was the only person who was gonna make it successful or 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 have it fail so um just to be transparent about sort of what what that means um (laughs) You know, I think that one of the, the biggest challenges was deciding what am I going to do first? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know, I have this like grand vision. You know, oh, we're going to be a profitable consultancy that every bank and retailer in the UK is going to turn to for their payments consulting needs. Okay, great. What are you going to do tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and tomorrow I have to buy trash bags and a printer, <laughs> yeah. you know, and like, you know, find a desk that doesn't give me carpal tunnel. That was a real thing. My, my mm-hmm. desk like gave me like very severe carpal tunnel. <laughs> oh, no. I had to get a different desk. Um, but you know, stuff like that. And it was like, you, I, I have a lot of um, respect for people that start their own business because it looks real sexy on the outside. Oh, you have your own restaurant. Oh, you have your own, you know, uh, uh, what? Law firm or advertising agency or whatever. And it's like, man, you took out a lot of trash, literally, to like, you changed mm-hmm. a lot of light bulbs. You spent a lot of time at Office Max, you know, to like <laughs> do those. And so it's not glamorous. It's really not, you know. Um, you know, people that start businesses have to really, really, really want to do it and be super passionate and excited about what the problem is they're going to solve. I, mm-hmm. I, I try to tell people all the time, I was like, I had a buddy who recently, like, um, you know, he left a big company to sort of put out his own, do his own consulting, whatever. And I was like, you need to be prepared to not get paid for a year and a half minimum. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you be prepared for that. You like because that's just the reality of it. No, yeah. um, I I got my first check after 15 months, mm-hmm. and you know I mean again I was lucky that I was had the support of a business that was like you know gonna you know they were paying me but like yeah. I didn't sell so so we weren't like going hungry or anything like that like I was getting paid but I didn't get paid for the work I was doing there for 15 mm-hmm. months and that's pretty good for like a starting a, new biz- a, a business like that in client services yeah. like you know so lessons learned yeah what was it like maybe like two lessons learned or like you know um, so lessons on? learned um i was desperate for help um i was really like I was totally fried <laughs> it's like because I was doing everything right and so I was like 
um, one of the first person people I hired, I was just desperate for like a warm body. You know? <laughs> like, I was like, please, you want to, you want to work here? Great. You're hot. You know? And um, that was a huge mistake because that person was not, um, was not a good fit. And the, the tax of just a, not the right employee cannot be overstated. It is much harder mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. find, especially when you're in a new startup, right? It's much harder. Um, it's just a huge expense and you don't, you don't want to do that. So I learned that lesson very early, like hire thoughtfully and capable, carefully and be conscious of what you're really looking for in somebody and never, ever, ever, ever hire just a person because they're there. <laughs> <laughs> ever, 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 yeah, ever. Well, maybe show up. <laughs> um, so we have another question from our very own Nova. Uh, yeah, Seattle. <laughs> she asks, um, so she states that you you stated that um, you've been doing a lot more mentoring um, and and inspiring others. Um, so she asks, what kind of qualities do you look for in someone you are willing to take under your wing and help advance in their career? I actually have a rule um, that I am unwilling to compromise on when I enter into a mentorship arrangement. Um, I, I do not do generic mentorship. So like, will you be my mentor? I want to grow up and be just like you. Like, mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. Because that's never going to happen. You you are not me. I am not you. Like you have all your own stuff. Like what I what I can help with is do you, what how do you want to change? Right? Mm-hmm. Do you want mentorship on dealing with your boss? Do you want mentorship on writing better do you want mentorship on conflict resolution do you i don't whatever but you have to you have to have a goal right and then i can help you just like sports right and maybe this maybe this is because i'm a retired ex-athlete right but like when you want to get better at a skill right you get a coach and you say I'm going to be better. I'm going to be faster. I want to be more agile. I want to have more flexibility. I want to blah, blah, blah. You set yourself a goal and then you practice and you get coaching on that thing. It's the same thing. You don't just go and say like, well, I'm going to be better at rugby. Help me. Don't work mm-hmm. like that. You know, we're all like at the end of the day, like athletics, I am 1000% convinced of this. Like, um, you know, a- there's so many analogies between um, athletics and business, you know, mm-hmm. um, and, and I don't, it, being a professional in anything, right. It's, it's about, you know, setting hard goals. It's about practicing. It's about teamwork. It's about losing. It's about, you know, all those things. And I, so I, I actually am super biased about hiring athletes. Like I'm very, or, or, or people who have done something, who set extraordinary goals for themselves and like worked towards them because I know they know how to do that. Mm-hmm. I can teach you how to write code. I can teach you how to, you know, whatever the, the functional skills, but I can't teach you to like have grit or like want to get better or things like that. So anyway, mm-hmm. so uh, I sort of went on a bit of a tangent, but like going back to mentorship, like have a, have a goal um, and then seek out somebody who you respect who's good at that goal and ask them to teach you their trade secrets. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's really it. Um, so I've got a couple more questions sure. here. Um, so, you know, with the whole COVID situation, um, some people are probably finding themselves out of work or like mm-hmm. um, the writing's on the wall a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, they'll shortly be or are already perhaps looking for a job. Um, do you have any tips for people who are currently, um, you know, you were looking for a job in the middle of a crisis situation, a global yeah. crisis situation. So yeah. perhaps you have some tips and advice on, on, on the job market right now and how to uh, stand yeah. up. Fortunately, there are a lot of people who are looking for work right now. Yeah. And un- unfortunately, there are not a lot of companies who are um, aggressively hiring right now. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, 
you know, I, I think this is my, my, my advice on this is, um, you know, I, I would, I would spend more time with your net, like investing in your network and talking to people about finding a job, mm -hmm. um, find people who have jobs that you want, um, or the kinds of jobs that you want and just talk to them about what it takes and, there may not be jobs right now is the, the sad part of it, but eventually there will be jobs and I'm hopeful that it's in a short, short order. And by being persistent about, you know, communicating with people, letting them know what you want, having your resume ready, being ready to say yes to whatever. Uh, that's, that's my best advice. Mm -hmm. um, it will be hard. It will be scary. Um, you may find yourself, uh, even applying for jobs that you may not have earlier because, you know, you, you, you are, you are keen to find one. Um, that's okay. <laughs> like, uh, so, so that's my advice is, uh, just be easy to get discouraged in these times. Mm -hmm. Um, but you guys all have grit and you're tough. And um, you have to, you know, when you're looking for a job, that has to be your job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you treat it like that. Yeah. You, I mean, you mentioned that a couple like important steps in your life kind of happened by happy accident, right? You like, you graduate engineering, then you're like, okay, let me do payments for a bank, you know? Like that. <laughs> yeah. So, that I say yes to stuff like people that people that know me like I say yes like the universe like you know if if like I'm I am so at Amazon we have this this um phrase that we use we talk called one-way doors and two-way doors and I find it to be a very useful um illustration so one-way door is a decision that is difficult to undo Right, it's, it's something that you can't. You, you, it's going to be getting married. That's the one way door. It's difficult to undo that decision. You should be careful before you enter into these kinds of decisions. Right, two way doors are decisions that are easy to undo. Okay, so uh, you know, in in, in profession, like uh, you know, um, uh, taking a new job. Mm -hmm. Right, if you don't like that job, there are other jobs. Right? Like yeah. you, you're not making a lifetime commitment to this job. So I've sort of taken that, you know, approach in my career of these decisions I'm making are two way doors. If I don't like it, mm -hmm. I have the ability to change it. I have that control. So when, when, the, when I have been presented with different opportunities, if I'm excited about them, then I take them, <laughs> you know, I say yes. And Sometimes that means moving to a new country or a new time zone. And sometimes that means doing something outside of my wheelhouse, like working on Alexa, which I have no like special skill set that says, oh, I should be working on voice commerce, you know, but it was exciting and interesting. And I was passionate. I was ready to, you know, invest some time in this space. And so, you know, I said yes to it. Was it my forever career? No. Did I learn something from it? Was it exciting? Yes. So, okay, cool. On to the next thing, you know? Um, yeah. How would you balance that? Because sometimes, right, like to, to like, say commit to something, right, and to like be good at something, like, put some time in, like you might have to like view it as a one-way door in the moment, right? So you mm -hmm. kind of like kind of channel your energy towards that. So to be sure, like each of these things I did, I did for like several years. Mm -hmm. You know, like when we moved to London, I was there for three years. You know, but like I knew, like, and Megan, I, I will never forget this. Like the weekend, so my boss made this offer. It was, oh, how do you feel about like, you know, moving to London and helping you know start this business? And I was like, how about if I talk to my new wife over the weekend about this? Right? <laughs> and we spent the whole weekend, and we were like, what is the absolute worst thing that could could happen? And, um. We were like, well, the worst thing that could happen would be like um, one of our parents died. Okay, well, could we deal like, like we could get on a plane, <laughs> you know? Um, well, okay, well, what's another terrible thing? Like that? Well, the business could collapse, you know, it could be, a, you could be not successful. You're like, okay, but like, I'm still going to be healthy. You're probably not going to divorce me. 
okay, that's a risk, risk I'm willing to take, right? So we sort of play this, like, devil's advocate kind of thing. Like, you know, what what is the worst thing that could happen? And it turns out none of it was that bad. And the upside was better than the downside. And so we, we mm-hmm. took that, we made that call. Okay, yeah. It's um just tied into a little bit of our mental skills stuff we've been learning with JCL for our practices, right, Monday, Wednesday. But uh-huh. a lot of, like, mental, like, self-talk, right, and, like, like um calm kind of vision on the field stuff is like analyzing okay what's the worst that could happen yeah. okay well, that's actually not that bad it's not that it's bad not that happen, like actually pretty awesome yeah. you know kind of like focusing towards like a what could happen and working towards that not like being afraid and making the wrong decision yeah and then like working from face of fear i naturally come equipped with like a lot of anxiety around like what could oh i think of all these bad things that could happen you know and um this i mean i'm not ashamed to say this like when i was in london this was coming to a very serious point to the to the stage where i need to get a little assist and uh, i went to i went to a therapist and the therapist was like here how about like next time you start to like get super anxious about just ask yourself like what is the worst that could happen and then keep asking yourself that until you realize you're Wackadoo and like, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> this is also a spoiler for the mental health version of Tar <laughs> coming up in the short weeks. Yes, thank you, Matt. <laughs> yeah, honestly, though, like, that was very useful <laughs> counsel for, for me professionally. It was like, oh, it's okay to take risks, you know, because the worst thing that can happen is actually not that bad. And like, I should have remembered that lesson from my athletic training. But I kind of lost the beat a little bit. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to relate that because, right? Because athletics is so like in the moment, mm-hmm. kind of like you know, with your whole self, and then the work can be kind of like mind, mind space. Oh, we have a couple more questions. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we have some. Um, so, Katie Sanford um, asks, um, "How do you balance keeping yourself motivated and pushing for the next step without pushing too hard or too fast? Is there even such a thing?" <laughs> I, okay, so I'm a terrible person to ask that question to because I think you would be hard pressed to find somebody with like more ambition than I have. <laughs> like, I, I don't know too hard or too, like I don't. I'm not built for the alternative. Like I, I have, it's fun for me to push hard. I've always sort of gravitated to experiences where that ambition and um, drive have been rewarded. Um, I am not the person that you want to, you know, uh, be in an operational role where it's more predictable or, or, um, less ambiguous I, that that's what i do so i'm, mm-hmm. I'm probably not the right person to ask that too um, but i will say like as a as a manager like not everybody is built like me mm-hmm. right so so one of the key things that i've had to learn as a manager is find out what motivates other people right that might be um, putting you into a challenging situation where you don't have a safety net right that might be um uh you know, uh, pats on the back. It might be um, monetary rewards. I don't know. I think it depends. Different things motivate different people. So that's been an important management lesson for me. So we have a couple of questions um, that are still in the comment box that we're going to get to, but I just kind of wanted to ask a bit of a wrap-up question. Um, it's a bit of a two-parter and a bit heavy, so I'll let you kind of... Um, <laughs> You know, let it sit on your palate for a little bit. But um, first of all, thank Should you. I so- the rest of this? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like uh, nervous. Like- first of all, uh, we just want to thank you. Um, yeah, my pleasure. Joining um, this call, I we've had some very great back and forth dialogue, um, some honest and, and positive engagement, and it's been it's been a real pleasure. Like I've had a good time, dance back and Likewise. forth. Uh, the drinks always never hurt. Um, <laughs> But uh, sort of my final question to you, and then we'll also address the questions in the comment box, so keep them coming if you have them, um, is, 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 is where you are, um, is this where you thought you would be? And um, sort of to build on that, what do you think is next for you? 
Um, so there's a few things about my job that are what I thought they would be. And there's a lot of things that aren't. So I had a pretty strong inclination that I would end up working, that I would work in technology. Mm. Um, and I knew that I would work on something that was high stakes and important. Turns out the money is important. Turns out <laughs> people want to get paid for stuff. They want to pay for stuff. That's my job. Okay. Um, so I knew that. Um, I did not know I would go into payments. Mm. <laughs> uh, in fact, that uh, I would have told you 100 out of 100 times what the hell is payments? I don't right. know. Like, right. Right. I mean, it's a very strange thing. Turns out everybody needs what we do. So uh, it's, it's good. It's important. Um, you know, all the like, uh, whenever I took those like tests, like, what do you think, what will you be when you grow up? What should you be? Yeah. Um, every single time I've ever taken those tests, it says I should be an ER doctor. <laughs> um, and then it's, you know, it's high pressure, high stakes, quick yeah. decisions, high judgment, you know, those kind. And um, organic chemistry terrified me. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, as it does, you made it through. You made it through. I right. did not. I did not make it through. And uh, <laughs> so that's why wow. I went engineering. And um, uh, anyways, this was my path. So there are attributes about it that are absolutely what I thought they would be. Um, I knew I wanted to lead people. I do that. I knew I wanted to be in a visible position to leadership and be, you know, sort of a stakeholder. I knew that. But the specifics that I, you know, are going to be in financial services, no. That part I didn't know. So the follow-up question for you is, what's next for you? You know, you've kind of been bopping around Amazon. Yeah, a little what? bit. Yeah. Maybe. Things on this call might surprise Meg. She doesn't know. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, um, I actually am really happy doing what I do right now. I, I've only been in this role for a couple of years. Um, uh, it's, it is a ch very challenging role. Um, I'm not bored with it yet. Um, I'm sure at some point I will need a new challenge. I really like working at Amazon. Um, uh, I like the people. I like the way that we work. Perhaps most of all, the thing I like about working at Amazon is that, um, you know, when you say to people, I work at Amazon, their their reaction is, I love Amazon. Let me tell you all the cool things that, like, I love my Kindle. I love my this. Like, my mm -hmm. favorite TV show is Bosch or whatever, right? Like, um when I used to work for the banks or you know, as a consultant to banks or whatever, it's like, oh, I'm a management consultant to banks. And they'd be like, let me tell you about all the terrible shit about your bank. You know? like, and, and I didn't ever really like to give that much thought. But um, after working for a company like Amazon, that's really, you know, it's, we're not a perfect company, of course, but like, by and large, is very well respected and trusted and important, com perhaps not now more than ever, very important company. Um, it's inspiring. It's inspiring to all of us. Like, I wake up every morning and I know, like, I'm doing things to help my friends and my family and my community a little bit. And that, that is very motivating. So, you know, what's next for me? I I don't know. I, I tend to believe it's likely to continue my career at Amazon. We're very happy here in Seattle. Um, you know, we have a nice house and friends and family and community here, but I don't know. Um, like I said, we tend to say yes to the universe. So we'll see. Um, Six weeks from now, we could be in New Zealand. You never know. Yeah, I know. But tomorrow, you're going to be making rotisserie chicken. Tomorrow, I know what's happening. It's rotisserie chicken. I know. Flights are cheap. Yeah, it's rotisserie chicken. Rotisserie chicken. I know. Flights are cheap. very cheap. You will have to sleep in a tent in the yard. But, um... Bring the cat. Um... Okay. Uh, thank you so much for your time again, Meg. Um, we're just going to go through some, we had some questions coming in late. Sure. 
um, in the chat. Gabrielle Cole again writes, um, also the, the tech space and maybe to a lesser extent, the corporate environment can be very male dominated. Um, how do you navigate networking in these spaces, uh, ensure you're heard and create opportunities for yourself? Women in tech, mm -hmm. passionate to a topic I'm very passionate about. Um, so I'm a woman, I'm queer, I'm a tech leader. I am a unicorn. Okay. <laughs> like, like there are not many of us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um uh, I am very fortunate there were a couple of things that really helped helped me sort of deal with that because it's very hard for a lot of people. First of all, I have four brothers. Mm -hmm. So I, from my whole life, this has been me and a lot of boys. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so they don't intimidate me foundationally. Um, or, and also like, I actually always got like, all my friends were always boys, all like growing up, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. like that, that's who I ran with, you know? And so it was always, for me, it was always like, you know, make like, like, be a little less of a tomboy, um, <laughs> you know? So, so I've always sort of been one of the guys, you know, like just from, from the beginning, um, that's been advantageous for me. Um, second thing, sports, uh, you know, the fact that like, I've always been like confident with, Mm -hmm. My sports really helped me with that. I was a pretty shy and anxious little kid. And, um, you know, sports gave me a lot of confidence in my ability to be successful. Like, I knew I could do stuff, right? Because mm -hmm. sports. And, um, you know, uh, I, I just sort of refused, <laughs> refused to let it happen to me. Um uh, and I'm also fortunate I'm about six foot one and <laughs> I'm not petite. Yeah. And so, and that, that is also like, I'm difficult to ignore, mm. you know, mm. um, I, I'm difficult and, and no one's ever accused me of being quiet. And so, mm. um, I naturally as a byproduct of all of these things, you know, brothers, sports, size, Right. I, I have never been in a position where, um, you know, men have talked over me or if I had, I, I call them out on it, frankly. Like yeah. Yeah. now in my, in my position now, mm -hmm. more of my role is to make space for people, for other people who don't enjoy my position, who aren't senior, who aren't, physically the largest people in the world you know who aren't um you know privileged in the way i am um so i try to focus a lot on that i i'm one of the i'm on our like diversity committee and inclusion committee and um try to do as much as i can to make space for you know more introverted people who are just as talented if not more talented than i am to to be um, heard and to lead and to be given opportunities. I think that is my job now. Right. More questions from the audience. From just the audience. Come on. Just camera shy. Camera shy. Come on. Come on just in. lean in. Just lean in. Lean, lean in. Hey, yo, <laughs> Cheryl Sandberg. Is that you? <laughs> hey. Um, this is know, Gabrielle Cole. Hey, Gabrielle. <laughs> um, so, you know, on the podcast, how you built this, I don't know if you like listen to it, but he always asked the, the following question at the end of it, which is, was it hard work or was it talent? Um, the guy you worked with, right? Yeah. Uh, hard work for me. <laughs> um, you know, even like, so I was never like, so I went to an Ivy League school. I went to an Ivy League school because I played basketball. I was good enough to play basketball because I worked my tail off. I wasn't the fastest. I wasn't the tallest. I wasn't the, I, I just like stayed in the gym and, you know, shot baskets till the lights went out kind of kid. Like, you know, I, it for me is about ambition more than talent. Um, 
period. Um, my 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 old boss said uh, used to say that like I have a big engine, <laughs> <laughs> like a lot of go, mm. you know. Um, but yeah, it's hard work. Yeah, I think I would second that to a lot of the people that I know that I personally admire and look up to. A lot of what I know about them, I know that in the spaces that they occupy and where they are, that uh, not to say that they're undeserving of like that there isn't some element of talent to it, but uh, knowing who they are, right? um, It just it does take a lot of work. Um, Yeah. So, um, thank you uh, for taking this time to kind of share your experience with us. It's my pleasure. I'll also just say, like, you know, not to put anybody on the spot, you know, but if you guys ever, you know, just want to chat or whatever, like, or have questions or, you know, looking for some counsel or advice, like, you can, like, easy to get a hold of, you know, feel free to reach out directly. Um, I'd be very happy to, to talk with any of you guys. <laughs> That's right, Nova. I was going to be reaching out. <laughs> it sounds like. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, part of our whole purpose here is to try and connect, yeah. um, connect different people and bring different people um, together in a way that, you know, service and helps grows, um, you know, our, our community um, and everything else that we're involved in. So well, I'm super um, happy you guys are doing this. And, yeah. uh, you know, the community of North Shore lives on. I think if, if ever anybody took inventory of all the like good and positive things that came out of this community, like, you know, marriages and jobs mm-hmm. and friendships and businesses and all of them are going to be a pretty, pretty amazing list. So I'm, yeah. I'm super proud to be part of it and um, you guys can count on, on me and also the other Meg, um, you know, we're here for you guys whenever. Nice. Thank yeah. you. All right. Be good. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Just oh. quick plug for next week. Next week. Oh, yeah. Nova, next week. Nova chimed next in a little bit at the end. Next week. Next week, um, I like I guarantee, right? Everyone who's been listening and everyone who's gonna watch this on YouTube and later mm-hmm. is gonna take a little bit, a lot of it, like a lot um, away from this. Not just like in the moment, but you know, as we like go about our lives, kind of like connecting yeah. different dots, and you know, like like um, like Meg said, reach out, reach out to any one of us, really, right? Like we're here, we're on the listserv, we're on Facebook. You know, mm-hmm. Meg's gonna have an Instagram about her food soon, so. <laughs> so. Is that they call Anna? it Meg's Corona Kitchen. That's Ooh. my <laughs> Meg's Corona Kitchen. We'll see what we call it after this thing hey, is over. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yes. Love it. So next week is Nutrition with Nova. And, uh, and she will be contributing to Meg's Corona Kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Good work, Anna Meg. Good work. So uh, Nova, um, we're excited for next week. Um, we're tuning in same time, same place. So Thursday, 7 p.m. Central. Um, here on Google Meets and then later posted to YouTube. So thanks to everyone who's watching. Like and subscribe. That's right. <laughs> subscribe. Hit that subscribe button down there. Another the one down there. Comment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. All right, bye. You. Thanks, everyone.